Now, when we plant our vegetable seeds, all of us want to get to this point here where we've got strong, healthy plants that are either ready to pot on or developing really, really nicely. And that all starts off from growing them from a seed. However, like myself, I'm sure you've had situations where you've planted seeds and for some reason, they just haven't worked. Well, there's a number of things that we can be aware of that can help prevent that happening. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you five reasons why your seeds might not germinate. And that will hopefully help you in the future to prevent it from happening again. Now the first reason why your seeds may not be germinating, it could be because they could be old seeds, they might not be viable. All seeds will have a life expectancy and they will have dates on the back of the package to tell you when they should be planted by. Now it is still quite possible that seeds outside of those dates, i.e. after that date has expired, will still germinate. However, you do take a bit of a chance and you might not get the rate of germination that you want. And what you want to avoid happening is situations like this. In this cell tray, the three cell trays on the left hand side were planted with spring onions which were old seeds and on this side here I have rocket and two varieties of lettuce and you can see that they've all germinated. These were planted at exactly the same time. Now I haven't completely give up on the spring onions, I am going to give them a bit more time to see what happens. Looking at the dates on the back of the packet of the seeds, these seeds were older. And that is a possible reason why this happened. Now, if you do have old seeds, you've got nothing to lose really, apart from a bit of compost by trying them and sowing them. If they work, they work. But on a year by year basis, I try and make sure that I stick by the dates on the back of the seed packets. And in most cases, that usually results in a good rate of germination. So the first reason why your seeds may not be germinating could be because the seeds are old and become unviable. Next, you have to be mindful of the quality of the compost and the type of compost that you might use to plant your seeds in. Now, if you're planting in cell trays like I am here, you want a fairly fine type of compost. Now, this is a really good quality multi-purpose compost. If you have a multi-purpose compost, this may be not quite as good, so there might be little bits in it. You might want to sieve it first, and that's usually really fine and really, really good quality. But of course you will end up paying a little bit more money for it. What you shouldn't be doing is just using general soil from your garden into potting trays or cell trays like this because often the quality and texture of that type of soil for starting seeds is not ideal. That type of soil will usually be perfectly okay when you want to plant the seeds out when they're a little bit bigger but starting seeds you want to have a decent quality compost or potting mix to plant your seeds and that might be a reason why your seeds aren't germinating. You just might not be using the right type of potting mix or compost to start them off. Just another little tip for planting seeds as well. When you put your compost into the cell trays, you want to compact the soil gently, but you don't want to force the compost down so it's a heavy compaction. You do really want the compost to be loosely compacted. When the seeds germinate, it'll just allow them to grow easier and for the roots to start to develop in the compost. And another really good tip, before you actually put the seeds into the compost, after you've gently compacted it, is water it first. So just gently water it and never use a watering can. Always use a small watering container that can provide the right level of moisture for the cell trays. What you don't want to do is flood the cell tray. I made this one myself, very, very simply, an old milk carton that I've drilled fine holes just in the top. And as you saw when I put the water on, it provides a nice level of water. The next thing that could be preventing your seeds from germinating could be the depth that you put your seeds into the compost. Now, as we've already watered this compost, I can put some seeds in here to demonstrate what I mean. Now, seeds come in different shapes and sizes. You can get the larger French bean or broad bean seeds which are easily to pick up and handle or you can get the smaller seeds such as brassicas which when you put them into your hand are very very tiny and almost impossible to pick up. You can see that I've got a handful of seeds in my hand just there. As a general rule you should be planting to a depth that's two to three times the actual size of the seed itself. So where you've got very small ones like these brassicas here they should be virtually on the surface. So what I'll do with the brassicas, I'll just put a few in my hand and I'll just gently tap my hand just to put them into a few cells. And now I'll sprinkle them randomly into the two middle cells here. And then I will give them a very small coating, but as you can see, I'm literally sprinkling it between my fingers. And that's all I'll do for those seeds because they're so small. If you were to plant very small seeds too deep, clearly you're giving them a greater distance from when they eventually germinate to the surface and they're gonna struggle. So small seed, very close to the surface with just a sprinkling of compost. Now the larger seeds, such as your French beans, they can be picked up and handled and you can, you can sow them individually. And remember, they should be two to three times the depth of the actual seed itself. So what I'll do is I'll just make a hole in the middle of the cell 
to a depth of around about two to three times the actual depth of the seed, pop the seed in and then just put a bit of compost on top and that's the seed planted. But, but the depth of the seed is really important. So another key reason why seeds may not germinate is that they just may not have been sown at the correct depth. Now clearly understanding watering is really, really important, particularly when you've just planted seeds. Now you've just seen those very small cabbage seeds that I planted a few moments ago. Very, very tiny and very close to the surface. If I was to use a normal watering can with a normal rose on the end and water them, Within a very few seconds, you can see the cell tray is completely flooded. And now with very small seeds, that can be a problem because it could actually wash the seeds out of the tray if they're fairly close to the surface. And secondly, if you're planting in cooler conditions where there's less heat and therefore less evaporation, that water could stay in the cell tray an awful long time and could actually end up rotting your seeds. So overwatering is a big problem. With larger seeds, such as the French beans, that's going to be less of a problem because the seed is deeper. But I'd always recommend using something a little bit smaller, especially for seeds that have just been sown, such as my converted milk container, which will provide a much lighter spray on top of the seeds. Now, when the seedlings start to be transplanted and get a little bit larger, such as these pepper seeds here, then you can start to use larger quantities of water when watering. But you do need to be mindful of the amount of water that you're actually using. Now when the seeds are first planted and I've done the initial watering, I will monitor them on a regular basis to see whether they need any more water. Now it does depend upon the temperature and the type of seed you use will determine how much water they actually need. As a general rule, if the seeds haven't germinated yet, every couple of days I'll just put my finger on top of the compost and just feel whether it's dry or moist and then take a judgment on whether I need any more water. If I am going to water further before the seeds have germinated, in most cases I will use a light watering or even a mist spray to provide more moisture until the seeds have actually germinated. So there's another possible reason why your seeds might not have germinated and that could in fact be because they've been either overwatered or maybe they've just been let to dry out too much and therefore don't have enough water prior to their germination. Now the next two are really important. I'm going to talk about them together and they are temperature and light and these are often really common reasons why seeds don't germinate correctly. If we start off with temperature, seeds require different temperatures to germinate. Some types of plants such as tomatoes or peppers or cucumbers and plants like that require a higher temperature to germinate and you will need to check the back of your seed packets just to confirm exactly the temperature that's needed. Typically peppers for example would need temperatures of around about 23 to 27 or 28 degrees centigrade and that's about 74 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit so you might need to start thinking about germinating these indoors in a nice sunny windowsill or by a radiator or if you've got a heated propagator that will also do the job unless the soil reaches these temperatures for these types of seeds then they won't germinate other types of seeds, such as brassicas that we've just planted, they require much lower temperatures and don't generally require any type of additional warmth. So for example, I could germinate those in my potting shed quite easily in temperatures of 15 and 18 degrees centigrade, which is 60 to 65 degrees Fahrenheit, so much lower. But temperature is really important in seed germination and it is a real big reason why some seeds just do not germinate. They just don't get the right temperatures in order to enable them to germinate. So depending upon what your climate is, your growing zone and what the seed varieties are, you need to ensure that you provide your seeds with the right temperature conditions in order for them to germinate. Now a crucial thing after the seeds have germinated germinated is light. The plants will need to have sufficient amounts of light in order to help them to feed and to grow. So when your seedlings start to emerge out of the compost and they start to develop a few leaves, you will need to ensure that they've got adequate amounts of light. So you will need to put them in a position either in a greenhouse or a polytunnel, or if you're growing them indoors like I do, on a windowsill that has plenty of light. If you don't, what will happen is the seedlings will start to get something called leggy. It's where they grow very thin, tall stems and they'll start to angle themselves towards the light. If you look at a leggy seedling, you'll notice that it's almost drawn itself to the light because it's struggling to find the light. So light is not really a problem until the seeds have emerged through the compost. There is a video on my channel showing you how to deal with seedlings that have become too leggy because you can rescue them if they haven't gone too far. And I'll pop a link to that video in the video description below. So if that has happened to you, there is a way in which you can rescue your seedlings. So check that video out. Just one final thing, if you are using a propagator to germinate your seeds, don't leave them in the propagator too long. When they've emerged through the compost, that's the time to take them out. If you leave them in the propagator at those warmer temperatures, they will grow really quickly and they could bolt. 
So what I do, as soon as the seeds have germinated and the propagator, I'll take them out and put them on a windowsill inside. Now I'm sure most vegetable growers will relate to the points that I've raised in this video. Every single one of those points at some point have been an issue for me and I've been growing veg for quite a long time. So if you're new to vegetable growing, don't be disheartened if your seeds don't work first time around. You can always try again. And hopefully the things I've covered in the video will help to improve your success rate of germination and therefore help to make you more productive in the future. I really hope you found this video useful and if you did don't forget to give it a thumbs up and if you want to subscribe to the channel for future videos on how to sow and grow fruit and veg and flowers and one or two recipe ideas don't forget to press the subscribe button and I'll see you all on the next video.